I was standing up front one night about 3 a.m. Guy came through. He said, um, hey, man, what's going on? I said, nothing. How you doing? He said, uh, do you have anything? I said, yeah. He said, what you got? I said, man, I got about, you know, four or 500 pounds. And he said, well, um, I got to have some. I said, well, how much you want? He said, I want about an ounce. I said, an ounce? He said, you can't get nothing less than at least a pound. He said, a pound? Then he looked up at the sign and saw the sign says God's barbecue, and he was like, oh, man, forget it. I said, what'd you think I was trying to sell you? And he just drove off. Big old misunderstanding, I'm assuming. I'm Rodney Scott, pit master at Scott's Barbecue, and we're in Hemingway, South Carolina. When I was younger, I, I was quite interested in what was going on with the barbecue. And I would always watch and look and watch and look. Then one day, my dad told me, he was like, listen, I need you to cook this pig. And I was 11 years old at the time. So I had to actually keep my own wood in the barrel. I had to go scoop it up with the shovel and I had to put the heat under the pig. And my first pig at 11 years old came out just right. In the beginning, it, it was a garage and my dad decided he wanted to cook a hog one day. And a few of the customers were passing through and they tasted it. It was like, wow, this is really good. And the demand started to, to get more and more and more. So he added another hog and he added another. And we eventually had to convert the garage over into a pit where we're cooking maybe five, 10 hogs a night. Nothing like a pig. Uh, barbecue pig is what I come up on and that's all I know. To me, barbecue is doing a whole hog. To me, I think of it. That's barbecue. When you say barbecue around here, we're talking about real pit cooked barbecue. When I say real pit cooked barbecue, I'm talking the actual wood. The, I'm so sure that we use just wood because we go out and cut it ourselves. My name is Jim Woods. You're in Stuckey, South Carolina. Over the weekend, we had a major storm that came through the area and knocked down my 70-year-old pecan tree. I got in touch with Rodney yesterday. They're down here today and they're cutting it up. And the only thing that Rodney will leave is probably the stump itself when he's finished up with it. It was a loss to me, but it was a benefit, hopefully, to the people that eat the barbecue at, at Scott's Barbecue. There's no middleman, there's no, there's no delivery guy, it's just me, the chainsaw. We'd rather go get it ourselves so we know what we're working with. So every week we go out, get the old truck started, get the chainsaws together, go get what we need to put the flavor in what we do. <laughs> kind of like a chef picking out his tomatoes in a garden. Uh, I pick my own trees fresh out of the woods. Yep, there ain't no other way. After cutting the tree down, we, we do everything manually. So you have to pick up the wood by hand, load it into the truck, and this goes on until the truck is full. Then we bring it in, we, we drop it here on the yard. Next thing, we have to crank up the log splitter, split all the pieces that we got. We got a little, got a little 14 horse, 14 and a half horse engine with the hydraulic cylinder connected to a hydraulic pump. This hydraulic cylinder goes down and slowly splits the wood to this point where it's small enough to handle and burn, which makes it burn easier, faster. Right here, this is the main heat source. This is what we call a burn barrel, which is made out of an old drum that was used at some point for fuel or whatever, maybe back in the day. And we torched it out, made a doorway as you see, and we took old truck axles that were no longer any good for a truck and kind of crisscrossed them in there to hold the wood until the embers fall in the bottom. After building the fire, while the fire is getting ready, put the pig on the pit. And after you put the pig on, when the coal get ready, then you start putting the coal under the hole. We take a shovel, scoop it in there, scoop up what we need, Take it on the inside, and we, we have an open door at each pit where we go under with the shovel, 
and spread the heat at both the ham and the shoulders. Nowhere else. And all the heat meets in the middle. You hear folks all over say they use the wood, but then they say they use wood chips, or they may use a few pieces of wood that they might smoke for a little bit. This right here, all wood, nothing else. 100% wood, nothing but wood. Cut, chop, cook. It's all right here in the wood. <laughs> When, when we're scooping up the embers and taking them in with the shovel, we're actually just slow roasting the meat, kind of cooking it slowly for eight to 12 hours to make sure everything, you know, the smoke simmers through, the, the real flavor of the wood gets locked in, and the meat is cooked all the way through. It's about 4 a.m. now. These pigs have been on since about 4.15 yesterday afternoon. We're about to flip them over, season them up, crisp the skin, get them ready to eat. The flipping is a process where the, the, the pig is actually face down on the grill and there's a, like a, a rack up under them. We take another rack, put on top, one person gets on the other end and one on this end and we hold it tight. And then we, we pick it up, twist it over and lay it right back down. So it's, it looks simple, but it's actually a little bit more difficult than it seems. And once you do that, you go ahead and you, you, you shake your seasonings, whatever it may be, and you, you add a little, we add a little heat to it, and make sure everything is nice and warm while we're doing it, crisping the skins all at the same time, and then we mop it. And the mopping process is kind of like putting your sauce on in a gigantic way, where most folks use a little brush on the grill, we use like a mop. Our sauce. Ha! <laughs> it's a vinegar pepper based sauce. Quite a few people think that it's mustard here, but mustard is really upstate from here. And from where we are, from Columbia on back, the PD region, we're mostly vinegar pepper based. Because a lot of places you get meat where they serve you the pork and give you the sauce to add to it. Here, we try to break it up so that when you turn your meat over, you still have color, flavor, texture, everything is already in. When I'm carrying the flashlight and I'm putting that extra heat up under there, I'm actually crisping the skin. When we're doing the skins, we try to keep an eye on it. And we're waiting on that perfect pucker, like what you see here. This is the skin starting to get crisp right here. And then we're trying to get that to get an even tone of this all over the entire pig. We'll take the crunchiest part of this and we'll sell it to customers by request. The rest of it, we'll take it and fry it up a little bit and bag it and have what we call the big skins, which are like our homemade skins. Kind of like a processed pork skin that you would see like in bags, but better. That sign says barbecue, 9.30 a.m. Respect that. And the reason I put that sign up, because we're here all night and we have folks waking up as early as 3.30, 4 a.m. And they want the barbecue so bad that they knock on the door, they pull on the door, they try to tear the door open, they knock, they yell, they scream, they get mad, you know, just to try to get it before 9.30. Once we take it in on the rack, we kind of put it on the table. And once it's on the table, my mom takes it takes all of the bones out, separates the fat from the lean, the bones from the skin, all of that good stuff. And once separated, she fixes up whether it's a pound or, or two pounds, three pounds, whatever the customer wants. I'm doing the hog up now. I'm taking the part and taking the bones out of it. Separating the bone from the meat. It's tender enough, I don't have to have a knife. They just pull it apart. It's like visiting a national landmark, you know. They're not going to bring it to you. You, you just got to go and, and see what it's like. And in our case, you just got to come out, take that drive to Hemingway, and, and, and see what we're like. I came from all the way about 45 miles from here. And I said, well, I better grab ask my wife today. I said, you want some barbecue? She said, yeah, I'm going to tell you about the same thing, too. So I said, well, OK, well, let's ride to Hemingway then. 
Thank you, dear. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I was up here on some business, but every time I'm here, I always stop by. If it's a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, whenever they're open, and try and get some good barbecue. I'm getting ready to go to Tampa, so my my um, my son lives in Miami. He wanted some um, barbecue, so he told me to come by and pick him up some, and then I got some for my daughter living in Tampa. I'm from Mullen, South Carolina, and I was coming back to Charleston and been coming up here for years, and I uh, thought about it, and, and uh, so I start stop by and get myself a a pound, get my two sons a pound each. I ordered a full pound of barbecue. Now, wait, is that because it's Friday night and you're going to take it home to the family? No, family? I ordered that because that's what I wanted. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got any skin? Yeah, you. I get uh, 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 some skin, two dollars of skin, and I love to eat it on my grits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have a lot of come in there, uh, you know, they love that skin now. Mm-hmm, love that skin. We serve it actually with just the meat, and a lot of folks would have to request the skin, and we will put a layer of skin on top of the actual pound or two pounds, whatever the customer gets. And if it's a sandwich, we fix the sandwich in smaller sandwich size styrofoam trays, and we add a piece of skin to the sandwiches upon the customer's request. Well, right now, I'm a gentleman in need of a good barbecue sandwich. Uh, not to say so much about my name, but I am Solomon Singletary, gospel recording artist right here in South Carolina area. But I'm also frequent in uh, Scotch barbecue right now, getting this good barbecue, man, that I love a lot. And I tell you, I wouldn't take it from no other place but here. The ingredients of a barbecue sandwich. Whole lot of hard work, cutting your own wood, having the right amount of heat for the right amount of hours, having that pepper vinegar based sauce with a touch of love and and that's just the perfect sandwich for me perfect <laughs> barbecue it's 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 a hard work in business the work is very physical very intense and it takes all week just to get that little flavor not just wake up oh, oh I'm going to be a pit master today and cook nah mm -mm. This is days of work right here for just this result. Days and days of work. To me, this is real barbecue. This is real barbecue right here. Cutting, splitting, loading, shoveling, flipping. This is barbecuing, at least around these parts. This is barbecuing. <laughs>